Yeah, I was going to say about pastry. Isn't it funny? Pastry is a sort of, it's a very sort of basic recipe, isn't it? It's sort of half fat to flour ratio yeah. generally. And nobody's pastry is ever the same, is it? It's funny, isn't it? It, it? It's one of these things that people yeah. seem to get very frightened of pastry. They get they get very touchy about and and oh, and you've to this and you've to that. And yet, like your 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 mother and my mother, they, they whipped up pastry because it, it it was a bit like well, it's a bit like the culinary equivalent of lycra, isn't it? It sort of covers a lot of sins, does pastry. Yeah, it's, it's a, I'm a big pastry fan. My husband's not so keen. He says it gives him heartburn, but I absolutely love pastry. I think that's one pastry. One pastry does give you heartburn. Ooh. And I do like it quite crispy, quite sort of well, crunchy pastry. Strangely enough, I'm going to tell people, but I, I, I set my oven on. I set the oven on and I'd forgotten that I'd made a pastry case. And, and I set me oven and look at this pastry case that I made. It's you seen it. Beautiful. Is it, is it, is it black? black? Is it well done? Is it well done? Is it well done? I mean, it's it's a beautiful shape, but it's as black as your father's. Oh, so that was left in me. I knew, I knew I'd put it somewhere. I knew I'd put it somewhere, but I couldn't really re- remember. Anyway, it was in the oven when I preheated my oven. Yeah, I've done that with meringue. You know, when you make a meringue and then you turn your oven off at night and leave yes. it to cool down overnight to get that crunchy meringue and then forgotten the next day, come in from work, but whack the oven onto 200. <laughs> <laughs> Easily done. Well, sometimes my oven's a little Thank bit like a cupboard sometimes. It's a good place to store things, you know, so actually, yeah. Yeah, I store things in mine too. Um, now we've got Steph with us. Steph, you, did you say you're on um on a narrow boat? Canal boat. Can she? That's the canal there, and that's the. Oh yes. That's the side of the canal. <laughs> that's the the towpath. Tow Excellent. And where are you moored up? We're in a place called Cosgrove on the Grand Union Canal. Oh, wow, great. Oh, I've seen Cosgrove. Cosgrove on the Grand Union. Cosgrove. So it's, we're on holiday, but I thought I wanted to come and, I know Sandy, I've seen Sandy in uh, in things before, and I love we- it to bits, and I thought, let's... Let's have a practice with Sandy before I go along. Oh, bless you, Steph. That's <laughs> kind. That's lovely. Thank you. Miss Are you going to lead us in one at some point, Steph? Uh, next Saturday. Oh, are you doing the um, oh, next cheesecake? Saturday I'm doing, the, um, next Saturday. Yes. Yeah. Saturday oh, night I'm next excited Saturday. about yours. <laughs> Excellent. I am. I'm re- I looked at yours. I thought, oh, yes, please. <laughs> but it will be I'll have a better life I <laughs> so are you going to be well, doing it from, from your from your from the boat the boat going past now <laughs> no no uh, I'm going to be at home at home okay so, yeah if it's nice weather I might I might cook in the garden we'll see <laughs> yeah oh Lovely. wow that's good very good. Oh, we got Marnie as well. She's disappeared Look. again. But it's it's lovely weather today. We've had a glorious day. I've got a bit of a tan. <laughs> Hi, Marnie. Hello. I prep all my stuff, but do I need like a mixer? Um, I got yeah. handheld mixer. No, no, you don't need that. Just your hand. No, no, just Excellent. your hand. It's, it gets very noisy, does it, when we all start blending or mixing? Don't need that. Oh, Marnie, you've got my book on your shelf at the back. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, um, it's been there about two weeks already. Every time we do this live. Oh, thing. bless you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good recipe. I had a look at it, and I'm glad that I will have a go today. Well, 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 well both of these today are in there. Both of these. I was going to say, um, Sandy, is that is these are these in your cookbook? Yes, yes, they are. 
And if people just contacted me on or via this WhatsApp or Facebook or on my website, Baking Baking Down Barriers, uh, I'll send them one. Well, Fabulous. A signed one. A signed one. Of course, yeah, it's there. I'll wait when I come across to uh, the to you know to the hotel. I'll come and see you and bring you one. So, ladies, actually, we're really? in five o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. We're actually now live. And Excellent. I'm going to pass to Chrissy first to introduce us. Hello, everybody. How are we today? It's Saturday and we're in for a treat because, um, you know, we're going to be making today with the lovely Sandy Doherty, who was on the Great British Bake Off. I think, was it series... Six, was it Sandy? It was 2015 and New Year's Day 2018. Oh, and don't we all just absolutely love watching? How can it be so fascinating and so nail biting watching people bake? But it is. <laughs> <laughs> so we're very honoured that you're with us today and that you're going to um, show us. You've actually written a, um, a cookbook, haven't you? Uh, I'm I have to a cookbook. Tell us about your book. It's it's not it's not a big. It's thirty recipes tried and tested. Um, I'm on with my second one at the moment, um, but this one it's just a little handy sort of book it, it's got a, a ring spine so that you can just it flips open it's very simple there's a place i'd like you to write in it i'd like you to write on it i'd like you to sort of have bent over corners it, i'd like you to fill it with other little recipes that you tear out of magazines you know just one of those a bit like your old bureau book that type of thing that's what i want it to be Lovely. So and is baking your first love then? Is that the thing you, you like doing the most, baking? Do you know, honestly, Chrissy, I think if I had to say it, I think I think cooking is my is my ultimate because it's not so scientific. Exactly. Um, I'm a little Two. bit a little bit random and yeah. sometimes if I go a bit random with my baking, it often goes off piece. It, it can be fantastic, can't it? Where you're obviously a culinary genius or it goes horribly, horribly wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now didn't you get um was it the bread uh, week? Did you get best baker or no, do you know? I never I never actually got best you baker. You never got best baker. Oh. No, I was close on biscuit week, very close. Okay. Um, bread week ended up, I got through it, and I think that's all I can say. I got through bread week. Um, I think bread's really difficult. Oh, but today, difficult. we're making um, soda bread, which is so basic and easy. And it's one of those things that, you know, it's very unlikely you haven't got these ingredients in your house, isn't it? Exactly. And and what, what I want to sort of impart today is that it's about... Just making a soda bread with what you have, not necessarily you need 500 grams of whatever you have in, 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 in flour, you know, so mm. it's not got to be too difficult or too complicated. And, and the thing with, you don't have to have bread flour, it can be any flour, can't it? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I try, I do go to our little cottage in Ireland, so actually... I buy a very, very coarse home meal. I, I, I've never seen it in this country. It, it, it is incredibly coarse and it's fantastic for um, soda bread. However, if you can only get home meal flour here, mm. just use lots of other ingredients, oats, wheat germ, you know, anything like that, anything, pine nuts, anything that you want in. Anything you fancy, and seeds and all sorts in there. Yeah, seeds, grains, home meal, bit of rye flour. What, what, and what about, you, um, you know, you can put herbs in if you fancy it, can you? I can, yeah, I've put herbs in. I've even been known to fry onions and smoke bacon. And we stir have to put those in. Stir them into my soda bread, yeah. And, that, and it also, is, it's unlike normal bread where you're, you know, if it's sourdough, it takes all day. If it's a yeast-based bread... You have to wait so many hours, don't you? It has, to, it has to rise and then prove it. And this is very speedy, isn't it? 
Oh, it's incredibly speedy, and um, I must say, I, I tend to make small. I'm going to show you today how to make it with smaller in, in smaller loaf tins, because then I freeze them because it's it has no keeping quality whatsoever. It mm. you know that thing. It in one sense it's speedy, but on another sense it it's got it goes as dry as it a doesn't bone. keep. It doesn't, it doesn't keep like a sourdough or, or a yeast no, base, does it? No, no, it doesn't. Um, I know. I went to um, I went to Ballymaloo foraging uh, a few years oh, ago, right. and we came back to find some very sour milk in the fridge and very yes. little else really. And so I just went out foraging. We found some fish in the freezer, and um, we'd been shown this sa uh, soda bread, and so we had a feast. You do, you do. What, what you, you get there? You've got a chowder, some soup, um, some smoked salmon, some canapes, some soda bread. You know, lovely fresh tomatoes fried and put on a slice of soda oh, yes. bread. It's a, it's a gorgeous lunch. Or oh, just skin. lashings of butter. Exactly. Slice <laughs> it. Even if, if you can slice your butter, that's even better. Absolutely. I'd see my teeth in the butter. Yes. <laughs> Right. right. So, Sandy, so, would you like to? Uh, what are we going to make firstly? I think we'll make the soda bread first, and then we can get it. We can get it in the oven. Okay, lovely. Um, do you want to talk us through um, our ingredients then, and, and uh, so anybody watching can um, join in with the baking? Yes, so, so I've got. 500 grams of flour now for the purpose as i said to steph you won't need you won't need scales then sometimes that cup measurement which is about 150 grams is a cup three cups of of flour now that that can be made up of wholemeal flour some oats if you've got oats my flour have we all just got wholemeal wholemeal flour i've gone i've gone with oats sandy because uh the shop i've actually had to use plain flour and oats and that's it <laughs> fine, fine. so uh, i'm improvising that's okay in this what's, what's marnie got what have you got flour wise marnie i've got roll art and i got milk flour so i mix it all together to make it as a half 500 grams Excellent. Brilliant. And I've got now, some rye flour, some uh, malted flour, some oats, wholemeal, and, and just some white um, right. flour. What I have here, I'm just going to, I keep this little mixture going in, in a little tupper just so that you know. And this is some rye flakes, some millet, some um, any what, what something a bit nutty, you know, even some. Um, do you remember the uh, the cereal, the uh, grape nuts? Oh yes. Yeah. Well, a handful of those, a uh, handful of bran, anything like that, and I just sometimes scatter a few of them in just to give it that. It gives it a little bit of a nuttier flavour. Right. Okay. So into there, you want to put a good teaspoon of salt. Okay. Once again, it depends. Some people like things like this on the on the, on the saltier side. Mm. We'll go with a little bit of salt. Then we all right, everybody. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. And then yeah. you soda. We're okay. Two level teaspoons of soda. So not That's heat right. level. Level. No, don't heat them. It, the, the temptation to heat, but you will. Do, it will just taste like soda. It will just yeah. taste horrible. You just level. It's, it's okay. not a very nice taste, really, is it? No, not at all. Now, it doesn't actually. It doesn't actually say on the recipe, but. In my journey of moving on, I just put a little slug of olive oil. So she you have that to our milk or? I, I just pour it in on the dry flour. Okay. Just 
Just um, and if you want them, awesome. just uh, a couple of tablespoons of, of oil, Marnie. Okay. Uh, the, the milk. Oil's not on your recipe, Marnie, but if you've got a little bit of oil, just, just put um, a little bit in. And, and what okay. does this and bring we'll to the bread then, um, Sandy? You know, because when you make um, normal bread, you add a fat, don't you, like some butter or something like that, or oil. Yeah. So what does this do for the bread? This just gives it that little bit of longevity. You know, it just uh, gives it a little bit of keeping quality, a bit of moisture. Yeah. Right, then over to your buttermilk. This is where this is where it's uncomplicated because when you, you and just use your hand. So stir in the buttermilk and mix it with your fingers so that you like your fingers become a beater. So is there a variation of buttermilk, Sandy? Um, you can get it from yogurt, can you? You could use yogurt actually. It's something with a bit of acidity. Uh, it's only because traditionally it, buttermilk is used. You could just use whole milk, but you could use yogurt most definitely. I mean, buttermilk is um, is a byproduct, um, and but it's not always easy to find, isn't buttermilk? Now this is quite a wet mixture I've got here, Sandy. No, should how wet should it be? No, it should be very wet. It, you shouldn't be able. In fact, you should nearly be able ready to pour it. Keep. Keep pouring in. You don't want to need it. This is not going to be needed. No. You so I'm going to use it. all of this milk because that's going to be quite sludgy, I think. But that's yeah. What it yeah. Is. Okay, good. We'll, we'll just take it to like. Uh, let me think. What can I say? You know, like sponge mixture. Oh, okay. So like, uh, well, not not as loose as a batter, but like you would with um, a cake. A cake, cake, like cake batter, yeah. Right. I'm just going to oh, well, I was going to put this just onto my baking tray, but I don't think it's going to cope with a baking tray. You need a loaf tin. You do need a loaf right. tin. I'll go and get my loaf tin. I'm just going to put a bit of milk in. Sandy, how long have you been baking for? What, what, when did you first, as a kid, or...? Oh, since before I was born, I would say. <laughs> I mean, grew up, grew up baking. You know, you know, my mum, my mum was a big baker, and we grew up with lots of baking. Desperate to have bought biscuits. You know, my mum that she'd have tinfuls of Anzac biscuits and raspberry buns and things like that, and all we wanted was penguins. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Never, never, that's it. Now, next. That's um, handy. Isn't it? When you make everything yourself and you bake, or all, all your children want is bought stuff. We never bought things. I, I, I very rarely buy. Well, is it very soft? Is that right, Sandy? I can't see it. Yeah, really? Like, falls off the spoon? Oh, yes, that's right. Oh, okay. That's, so I know, this, I know it's, no, it's, yeah. it's deceptive. Yes, yeah, okay. This, this recipe so this was... going into a two-pound baking tin, um, you know, loaf tin. It can, yes, it can do. It won't rise that much because it'll fill it, but um, I'm going to use these smaller ones because I find that they're handier. Uh, I know it's deceptive, um, but a lady in Donegal taught me this recipe, and uh, she said she always made it in loaf tins, very soft, and she got a nice, nice mixture, nice loaf at the end. So, do we have to grate the tin? No, you won't need to. Should you should it? Actually, uh, that, that's, a, that's a bit of a fib. It will depend on the quality of your tin. And I do have some non-stick tins here. Um, and if, I, if I felt a bit dubious about a tin I've got, I'd be tempted to put a layer of uh, grease proof in it. That should be all right. Mine is 
Okay. No, thank that's you. Right, man, I think. Yeah, and just pour it thank in. You. Okay. We'll so down. once it's in, Sandy, do we need to get this in the oven as soon as possible? Uh, preferably, but not 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 emergent. It's not you know it's not emergent, but you don't want that you don't want that reaction of the acidity of the uh, um, buttermilk and the bicarb to lose it. You know you want so so get let's let's get the in. Yeah. So what is the temperature again? Sorry, okay. I'm a bit slow today. <laughs> oh, now then, let me just tell you that, Mark. Let me just tell you, Marnie. Uh, are you 119 Celsius? Brilliant. Are you Thank you. Okay. Yeah, well, 190 Celsius in normal oven. So, Sandy, with this recipe, why yeah. do you not need to um, use any yeast? Because your bicarb is your bicarb that rise that rises it, you see. You just so need the it, rising agent, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the, the buttermilk, the acidity of the buttermilk and the bicarb uh, have a reaction and that causes it to rise. And of course the idea was was that it was made every day, you see. Now, this lady in Donegal, she gave me this recipe to, to pour out, because normally I've always been a needed one, you know. Oh, well, you don't need it, actually. It's something you don't need. Um, so, have we all got that in the oven? Yeah, mine's in. Right. Yes, mine is in. Mine is uh, this in. is something you can do, isn't it, Sandy? You can do this if you've got, you know, if you ever find you've got sour milk. You know, like yes. you use sour milk in scones, the sourness uh, makes it rise, doesn't it? So if you've got sour milk, then you just make some soda bread. Make some soda bread and freeze it. It does freeze, you know, I, 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 this is why I make the little loaves. It does freeze. And while it's in the oven, just before we move on to the um, shortbread, I'm just going to yeah. show you something. So, as you can see, this is one, this is one I've made, right? What you made earlier? Triple and peach fashion I've made earlier. So I made it in a little loaf tin. And then what I would personally do is I would sort of slice about thickness, a bit thicker than a pound coin. Uh, Spread it heavily with cream cheese. Oh. <laughs> I like it when you say heavily. So it's really <laughs> <laughs> oh, and some smoked salmon. Smoked salmon. Ooh, we are fancy. And if you cut that into oh, little nice. triangles, there's a nice Very carrot nice. Day, hey? And then a wedge of lemon. Beautiful. See? There you go. That's uh, to have with your gin and tonic, Lovely. your glass of wine, whatever. Fabulous yeah. little canopy starter, early evening, lunchtime, whatever. But that really, really works. And if you do have the little loaf tins and you put them in the freezer, and if, you know, unexpected guests, somebody bobbing around, sat in the garden, this can be done in minutes. Literally, because you just take so, out your soda. So when you take it, if you've got other people that just call round, which my house can be a bit Piccadilly Circus, or it was before COVID-19, um, you get it out of your freezer and then how about defrosting it or just leave it to defrost for how long do you if, think? If you could leave it to defrost, then that that, that, would, be, that would be optimum. But by all yeah. means, put it in your microwave on defrost, just like you were defrosting a loaf. Yes. Okay, and, and so our, our bread's it now in the oven. So we've got that on one ninety, said, didn't you? Yeah. Is that yeah. not? Is that fan or just regular? Uh, I would say I would say about one eighty fan. You know, one ninety normal. Okay, within re, you know, within a, around there because everybody's oven's slightly different, isn't it? Yes. Um, yeah. But That's just great. about that time. So. Okay. This this oven here is very different. <laughs> oh, I, I I'm sure it is. Is, that, is it a wood fired oven? Yes, Steph. 
Steph, I seem to have lost the video. So this other one here, um, Sandy, is very different. Sandy, I've used um, these little foil trays. Yeah. Can we see Sorry, Chris. We've, we've lost the video feed to Steph. Oh, Maybe sorry. She's gone on the channel. Steph, lost you. <laughs> I can hear you, Steph, but I can't see That's you. That's the video feed. Yeah. It, it seems oh, okay. One beyond, second. Maybe... Joe, can you just have a look? Oh. I can see them. Oh. Well, I'm, I was just going to say, you know, there's um, just a few of us on today. So we're all very a select group. But anybody watching on YouTube or uh, Facebook or Instagram, you know, you can join our Zoom and cook along and you know be with us on this cook along so do join in if you want to we've got other cook alongs coming up but um you know as it is now i hope you're cooking along with sandy and her lovely bread and short shortbread so i'm quite excited about doing the shortbread next oh yes right then let's move on shall we let's do it right. so i tell you what though i'll tell you what i do like i like i like my old-fashioned fines and my little balls and things like that i love i love antique balls anyway that, that that's just a little plug um <laughs> so parmesan parmesan shortbread we can we can attack this in a couple of ways you can do this okay. in a processor you can do it uh in a bowl you can you, you can just make it very very quickly mm -hmm. um so in the bowl, we've got some. Here's my second glass of wine coming up now. Oh, wow! Oh, look, you can break the way to that. Here's the guys. Cheers, Cheers guys. Cheers. Cheers. So, <laughs> Cheers. Once again, I'm, I'm, funny. I'm a big advocate in. I mean, if weighing out, I, I, I believe baking you have to weigh, I'm afraid. It's one of those things. But sometimes I have just converted something here. So this parmesan, and this is really for Steph, bless her, because I love her so much. She <laughs> did no scales on this boat. And it's <laughs> 200 grams of self-raising flour. Well, that's a cup and a half in your cup measurements. So okay. being, a, being a true cook, Steph, yep. you should have the cup measurements in your suitcase. <laughs> have you had failed, Steph? Thanks. So, <laughs> Sadly not. Sadly <laughs> not, but we're, we're trying our best here. Yeah. <laughs> now, with, for the Parmesan, I'm not, I'm not the biggest advocate of of pre-grated parmesan cheese you know this stuff I, I i like the block and i like to do it myself however this for this recipe the the ready grated good stuff is 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 what you need really you need that fineness now yeah. in the recipe it says 150 grams which i've worked out because i've altered the flour accordingly is is one pouch right so right. I just got my husband to grate mine. Oh, well, that, oh, that's pretty you go. good. When you, if you've got a slave, that's all right. So, it, it, Parmesan, and he'll do gin, so he's he's winning. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, you've got something to grate for you. So put that in with your flour. So you've, you've I have a lot to learn from your Chris. All in, Sandy. Oh, yes. <laughs> so your flour and your Parmesan are in your bowl. Oh, right. Okay. 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 Yeah. All right. <laughs> and then, yeah, uh, it's a hundred gram, one hundred and twenty grams of soft butter, and for the purposes of those without scales, that is half a cup of soft butter. Now, what I've done, and I, I've tried this a few times, because once again, thank you. It, it's a quick, it's a quick recipe, but you know, softening butter isn't always the right. You know, microwaving it tends to melt it, you know, so... It separates uh, then, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So actually, you know, your spreadable butter, it does work with that. So, if you get half a cup measurement or 120 grams of your soft butter goes into your flour 
and you cheese. Right. And if we're adding that love is no, should I not that? No, should I not that until it's soft? Yes, yeah, squish it about, Marnie. Squish it about. Squish it about. <laughs> yeah, I will. That's it. Squish. Pretty it's sexy. like you're drinking your men, Marnie. <laughs> Should we get our hands in here, Sandy? <laughs> now, coming back to I'm that. I'm squishing. Good, good. All quick. <laughs> I would say I put a twist, I put a few twists of black pepper because I do quite like pepper in this. However, oh, yeah. however, you can I won't put any salt in because I think there's <laughs> enough salt in your uh, parmesan. Yeah. But uh yeah. some mixed okay. dried herbs. So oh, can we use fresh herbs, Sandy? It, well, actually, I'd use fresh herbs if you sandwich them together. I'd use fresh herbs in your in your cream cheese filling, to, but for the actual recipe itself, I'd use dried because you don't alter the moisture content of your shortbread too. If you use, there's too much water in in, in fresh yeah. ones. So oh, let's spray around for a bit. So they're a bit dry. Rosemary, okay, Sandy. Rosemary's lovely. Rosemary would be perfect. Is rosemary um, okay, Sandy? Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, rosemary is fine. That would be lovely. Uh, chili flakes. Of, uh, so a bit of chili flakes. A bit of chili, Sunday. Yeah, chili. Yeah, perfect. A bit of chili. <laughs> Just bung it all in, Hot stuff. Sir. Hot stuff, Sunday. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just winging it here. <laughs> I'm hoping no, it's going to be good. I'm sure it is. Cross it well. It won't go wrong, Steph. So, when you've got no, it mixed I, I together, have faith. you're good. When you've got it mixed together, get your hand in. As the actress said to the bishop. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take mine out on the bench. Is that wrong? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it. Well, just need she didn't it. say she was winging it. <laughs> yeah, but you know, like shortbread, shortbread's just a matter of patience, isn't it? Whether you're making any kind of shortbread, you think it's not going to pull together, but you keep using the warmth of your hand, and it does, it pulls together yeah. eventually. Slowly, slowly, slowly. It's not a fast thing, is the shortbread? This is this is mine, Sandy. <laughs> I see you. Oh, still got it's coming together yeah. now. Steph, I can't see you. Steph, no. I wonder if it's. I want to be, uh, we're not uh, see her, Nick. Well, Come on, Mr. Technician. technician. You guys. Come on, <laughs> Technician. Look Nick. at it, Nick. Now we don't want to see you, Nick. Come on. Can't fix this. <laughs> <laughs> this is mine. See you now, Nick. Yeah, I need to uh, try to get them That's together, fine, but they're dry. Thank you. I can't see you, Steph. Sunday, this is mine. <laughs> I can't see you. Can you see me now? No. no. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. Steph, oh, we'll work on bless. this for the next one. Oh. I think my internet speed's gone. Hang on. Maybe narrow boats and take yeah, it's all like a ball. We're looking good. Good. <laughs> well, that's it then. That looks good. Hi. My video. Here we go. Thank you. Uh, there we go, guys. What? Wait, wait, wait. Look at that. Is she on? No. 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 That's look, we're so looking good. good. Steph, have you got your finger over the camera? Yeah. <laughs> no, definitely not. The wrong way, have you, Steph? Cam I can't Camera facing the wrong know. way. No, no, we're good. We're good. I can see you guys, all of you. Oh, and I can see so myself. Fun. So I think it's just a bad, bad connection. Yeah. Okay. 
It'll be better I to But I'm looking that. good. Right, well, if you... Yeah, it will. A nice soft ball, like a ball of pastry, yeah? Oh, it's lovely, yes, yeah, sorted. Lovely. Yeah, got that. Smells lovely and cheesy. It does. Good. Yeah, I never think that top bread can be savoury as well. So I'm really excited about this. And yeah, I did try your top, top bread. Uh-huh. Right. I did try your top bread, Sandy, and it's gorgeous. Is that the Thank sweet you, one, Marnie? Uh, I did try the um, parmesan one um oh. from sunday and it's absolutely stunning it's, I, i'm sure Yum. it's going to be good this one this recipe is going to be great yeah. now then. Do it's a flower or board for rounding this then you uh, can sunday. One, of, one of two things you can flower your board if you if you if you like to do it that way hang on a sec i'll just show you Oh my oh, God, all the time it just come together. Has it come together, Marnie? Mm. Yeah, this is amazing. Yay! This is like magic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yay! So, you can, you can either, I would suggest you roll it out between two sheets of grease proof. Okay. If you, if, don't, if you haven't, don't worry, just flour it. But, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You'd laugh if you could see me now, Sandy. I'm using a, a milk bottle as a rolling pin. <laughs> oh, bless. Oh. But hang on, Steph. There's also the other option of rolling it into a sausage and cutting it like pennies. Yeah. You've got that option ah, as well. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. Right. okay. If you Thank if you, you were sandwich them if you were sandwiching them together, I would suggest roll them out and cut them out because they look a bit uh -huh. smarter. However, if you just wanted to make a nice sort of dish full of the uh, actual, you know, shortbreads, I would roll it into a sausage, chill it, and then just slice them down and bake yeah. them like that. So if if you don't have the ability to if you don't have the facilities to roll, just just make just make the sausage affair. And then, Sandy, would you just give it a squish with a fork or something, or...? You could. Yes, you could. That, that Anything, anything, whatever. If you cut them quite thick and then press them with a fork, you'd get a pattern, you see, and that, that yeah. would be quite nice. Um, but sometimes it's just it's one of those things that rolling out is not somebody's... It, somebody, it might put somebody off. To roll it to roll it out, you know. So I don't want them to, I don't want anybody to be put off. But if we're rolling out, how thick or or thin should I say? Are we rolling this too? Well, this is what I'm going to say. Now I'm not I'm not sort of avoiding the question, but it really is up to you. Um, I would say like about like a pound coin. You you I'm want quite thin. Quite thin, but you you want something to be able to sort of taste because they do just melt away, you see. So mm. you know, um quite so quite thin. Thin. A, a pound coin's not that thin, is it? No, it doesn't buy you much either, does it? <laughs> <laughs> not I, made for, I made these for Paul Hollywood on Biscuit Week. Oh, and what did Paul say about your sandwich bread? Ah. He, he applauded because you had, had, had to make a, a a biscuit box and then put some biscuits oh, yes. in. I remember. And that. I made a sun dried tomato biscuit box, and he, he applauded oh. the fact that I wasn't doing gingerbread and that I was doing something savoury with bacon yeah. rather than something sweet. Well done. <laughs> Did you ever get a handshake though, Sandy? Oh, a handshake, handshake was on New Year's Day for my um, uh, chocolate tart Alaska bombs. That's what I got a handshake for. And I cried. Oh, <laughs> it is very emotional all this thing, isn't it? <laughs> it's an incredibly emotional journey, it really is. <laughs> I'm rolling my. That was the best um, bit of it, Sandy. 
What a bake off. Uh, do you know, honestly, Steph, the best bit What was the for best me, bit for you? What did you enjoy the best? Uh, the boost to my confidence. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that, that's brilliant. That sense of, a really, we all know, except for Marnie, but we're all <laughs> that, that sort of middle-aged range where you, you start to wonder what's your purpose in life and what's it all about and Absolutely. where am I going? Because you don't get recognised anymore. You don't you no. don't get noticed in a shot. You do feel no. like a, if, once you get in your 50s, you're, you're invisible, don't you? Exactly, exactly. And I was coming up to that age and I just thought, you know, I need to do something to remind myself that I'm okay. Because as yeah. much as... You know, it's, and, and okay, I didn't want to be fabulous. I didn't want to be amazing. I just wanted to let myself know that I was okay. Yeah. And it, thinking of middle age, you have to get there to feel that, don't you? And, and, and do you know what, though, um, Sandy, you know, middle-aged women, we've got an awful lot to offer and a lot of experience, haven't we? Certainly, most certainly. We have, and we're not noticing. And I think sometimes baking is, or bake-off is that... Is that platform to be able to demonstrate that you're okay, that you are, that middle-aged women have a lot to offer? Yeah, so I hope everyone watching on live on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube are noting that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I I think that'd be quite quite really, I'm not, I'm not going to get political, but, you know, this uh, people over 50 having to shield when did we stop being useful? I know. When did we start being older? <laughs> when, did, when, when did that happen? <laughs> oh. I think yeah. this is a good statement, really. Sandy, thank you so much for sharing. That is um, oh. very open and honest. It's, and it, that's a lot. Thank you, Marlon. Thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. Watch, <laughs> thank Lovely. Anyone who's watching it, you click like. I tell you what. I tell you what, though. The, all this, this bake off and all this and doing this. I, I, I've met some amazing. I, I mean, I've met Marnie. I, I, I met Steph, and I know. And Steph was round the corner. She's only up the road. And lovely. You get to meet people, and yeah. like you, <laughs> things like that. You do get to meet people. Not and today. Things, you know, <laughs> Cooking and baking have been that platform to just sort of say, here we are, we don't particularly take ourselves over serious. And yet, here we are producing things that everybody can talk about. Because who doesn't talk about food? Well, it's been a great solace during the lockdown, hasn't it? Yes, ha yes, it has. Oh, definitely. So, whichever way, definitely. who's going who's no, you to think so? So, you're rolling out. Go on, Steph. I was going to say that um, the great thing about baking, apart from obviously in, in lockdown, but normally baking brings people together. And I think in lockdown, what I liked was baking and handing some to the neighbours and, you know, the yeah. late old lady who yeah. lives down the road and all this sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. And sending it's some to my thing. parents and, you know. You felt a connection, even though you weren't physically touching and, you know, it, it, to be able to give something to your mother and father and, and help them is a great thing, I think. And I think, I think as um, women, um, you know, they have a, a need to do that, don't you think? Especially if you've had children that have left home. Um, you know, it's like Sandy was saying, you know, you can, you can feel invisible when you're an, an older or mature woman. Um, and as I say to my girls, do you see this? This could be you one day. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not invisible, apparently. I <laughs> am. <laughs> Somebody loves I, you there, Chrissy. You're all yeah. right. <laughs> well, I tell you what, though, I think that, you know, cooking and baking has this language that everybody, it, it crosses divides. You know, it, everybody can talk about food you know i break down barriers with yeah. kids at school through it doesn't you know, matter what, what age you are right. what face you are yeah. what religion you are we're all united everything. aren't we in sharing a food everything talks about everything comes around about food and it just has this universal language and actually you know 
if you had to say something, I think sometimes when people get stuck for words, because, I mean, let's face it, a cake says, I care, I understand, I love you, I, I want to help you, I don't know what to do, so here's a cake. You know, it, it says such a lot. I mean, <laughs> when, I, when I back at school, I did some work with the uh, Help for Heroes of a Catterick, um, and some of our underachieving kids, some boys at school, and we did some baking together. Now, they were two worlds, injured veterans and um, underachieving boys from Bradford. Would Their worlds would never have come together, and yet there they were, teaming up, making cake. Wonderful. Because you know, you're, you're one of our kids with um, uh, children, isn't it, Sandy? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a safeguarding. I, I, I do safeguarding, so I'm not a teacher, but I uh, sort of work with the kids that have had, you know, difficult carries on and work with social care and, and things yeah. like that. So, you know, I think I come home and bake because it's a little bit of light relief in a dark world. Yes. But, you know, there's always light <laughs> at the end of the tunnel somewhere and you must see that in the work you've done. Oh, most definitely, yeah. Yeah, the kid, yeah. I love them, really. Well, Sandy, um, I was lucky enough to try one of your uh, spectacular bakes recently, the uh, Jaffa cake. Talk us through that one, would you? Oh, the Jaffa cake. Yeah. That's, now, well, well done. Nick, Nick did, Nick and Nick came for a meal and we had the Jaffa cake. Uh, I made this Jaffa cake, a large, very, it was very large. It lasted it's a huge. long time, really. Huge. Uh, it is in work in progress because I think I can cut the sponges down a little bit. But uh, to flavour a jelly, it, it was great. Beautiful. But I'm wow. working on this new book at the moment with um, a public publisher in Leeds, just a little pub. And we're working on Yorkshire recipes. Well, no, my recipes given after Yorkshire and Northern names. So there's some very tenuous links. <laughs> And I mean, tell you what's the hilarious. No. <laughs> right. Ten. Sounds good. This, you do, you do, just so that you know, you, you do. Now, if you were to make this and roll it, like I said, into the sausage shape, you could chill that. Keep it in your fridge, uh, and they say if you were having some people around or something, garden party, something, you could keep it in your fridge, uncooked, and then just slice it, put them in the oven, and 15 minutes later, you, you know, you've got something to something to offer. Yeah. Now, Sandy, yeah, that's what can we actually do. freeze, you know, you're saying about rolling it into a sausage, could we actually freeze this? You could. Yeah, you could. There's nothing to stop it. I mean, you've got, it's going to be all right to freeze because you've got full fat butter. You know, it, it it's the fat that freezes. When you have something with fat in it, it freezes every so well, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. So, so we could freeze, we could roll this into a sausage and wrap it up and put it in the freezer and get it out when all these people keep coming round to our homes. I don't know who these people are because I think you know I keep talking about all these people and I don't know who they are. Um, but or even, or even if you just close the door. Now the thing is, I'm gonna, I'm just going, I'm just going on a wing here on a now. Answer me if I'm wrong, but would this roll out and would it line a pastry case? Oh, that'd be nice. We need to make like a, 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 um, a shortcake base for a savoury topping. Yeah. Because you could put, um, you could, you, you know, you wouldn't necessarily Ice. bake something in it. You could put a cold topping on it like you would yeah. with a, um, a, a sweet one where you do something like, um, you know, like a creamy topping or... or yeah, you if know, you were doing, yeah. say, for, yeah, exactly. If you were doing, say, something like a caramel shortbread sweet version... Hmm. Who's to say that you couldn't make this, press it into a tin, bake it, and then cut it into squares and pipe on a blob of 
cream cheese or something. Yeah, you could. You know, garlic mascarpone or something like that on top. Mm. So, you could add all just, sorts of your mascarpone, couldn't you? Exactly, which is what I'm just going to show you now. So, starting with the star shape. Oh, and that's Marnie's got stars. Have you, Marnie, or are they flowers? Yeah, it's it flowers. flowers. I try my best. Oh. And I put it too close. So when no, the no, it, it's going to spread out. They don't spread. They won't spread much. What what I would say is, um, if you make when you're making these again, if you would chill them now, and then let them chill for about twenty minutes, it firms up the dough. And then when you bob it in the oven, you get a sharper finish on the edge of your of the on the edge of your biscuit. Mm. Um, when, when you cook from soft. There's more chance of things spreading. So, um, I cooking see. from a chill, yeah, any, any biscuit that you cut out, if you chill it, it gives you a sharper finish on your on your end biscuit. That's brilliant. <laughs> Once I, I line Sandy. the other two line up, I will put it in the fish. Right, I'm bringing in now, in true Valerie Singleton fashion. Oh. So I've made, earlier, I've made some bases, and then on the tops, here's one with, I've brushed with um, cayenne pepper. Oh, here's nice. one with a, with a couple of little flakes of sea salt on. Yeah. And here's one that I just sprinkled with a couple of, a few nibbed hazelnuts. Boom. Now, what I was going to do here good. is I've got some, like I showed you with the, I've got some fresh herbs, right? A bunch of fresh herbs. In here, I've got dill, chives, and parsley. And I'm just going to very quickly bob them in my little mullet. Just a sec, bear with me. Bear with me, Carla, bear with me. Okay, so these fresh green herbs, I'm going to mix into some uh, cream cheese. I know, I know you can buy cheese with garlic and herbs but i think this is just just a touch classier and we love a bit of class don't we oh we like a bit of class yes i'm full of it <laughs> sandy yeah sandy yeah oh sandy i've i've had to put mine in the oven because um I don't want to waste my gas on the boat. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine, Steph. So put mine in the oven if that's okay. That's fine. That's fine. Just, just watch them because they'll turn quite quickly. Okay. In the meantime, you're baking. Right, the thank you. Andy. We'll do. Oh, what? Um, about well, if you're at two hundred Celsius or about one eighty fan. Right, but um, at the moment, our right. our thank you very much, in the Andy. oven. They will, they'll be all right in they'll be all right in the shelf in a shelf in and around. Just keep your eye on them. Okay. They'll only take eight to ten minutes. Thank you. And then I'm just so I've just mixed those fresh green herbs with um, some cream cheese or mascarpone, whatever you think. <coughs> I'm just looking for a spoon. I've totally lost count of, of how long our, our soda bread's been in the oven. Are we all right? Yeah, in nice, about and, when... nice and brown. I'll have a look at mine. Actually, you could oh. sharp, a sharp knife down the centre. You don't want it coming out sticky. That, okay, that be like you would with a cake. Okay. Just like you would with a cake. Thank you. Well, this is mine at the moment. Oh, wow. 
Can so you that looks great. Marley. Oh, Marley, that looks amazing. Marley, oh, if, you put a knife, you. if you put a knife down the centre, does it come out clean? I will have a check now. Do. <laughs> No, still, still, not very, still um, have some sticky bit on it, so oh, I think well, I have to put it back. Put it back, put it back, yeah. It, it won't harm. <laughs> yeah, I think I've done so much before. I've just got to. They got a picture, and um, when I was in Ireland, they, they put the it, to it and they let the fairies out. <laughs> Hang on, this Chrissy and Steph talking at once. Oh, sorry, hear Steph, them. are you talking as well? I'm right. very loud. I can't hear when Steph's talking. <laughs> I was just saying that when I've made soda bread before, it was a, it was a thicker mixture, you know, so we made it in a big, you know, just yeah. loose on the tray. And then they always yeah. cut a cross in it, don't they, to let the fairies out? To let the devil out. Oh, no. well, I, I always told the fairies, so I, I think I'd rather have fairies than the devil. <laughs> I was fairy, fairy, yeah, let the fairy, yeah, fairy, yeah. Um, that, I mean, that is an option, but this soft, this soft version does make. I don't know. There's something that I think it's a little bit softer in its eating. Oh, good. Well, well, I can't wait to try it. And um, and Steph, how are you getting on with yours? Then you were trying to speak. I'm sorry. second is good on each of them. Mine's red. It's rubbish. Are you there, Steph? Well. There's a fantastic smell in this kitchen, in this in this narrow boat. Look who's turned up. Somebody's just turned up. <laughs> this is one of my two dogs. Because we're on the boat. Oh. So uh, honey, this is honey. She's just turned up. She I think she can smell those parmesan biscuits. <laughs> they smell fantastic. I'm gonna wash my hands. <laughs> so when you've Half and half, when you've rolled out your biscuits, as I say, I've done some plain ones. These have got herbs in. I've rolled them out. But then, I, I can say, I've put some toppings on, on some of them. So you would you would half your bakes and half tops. And then the cream cheese that I've mixed with the fresh herbs, I'm just piping on a good dollop and putting on a top. Now, what I will say about this is, if you want, if you are serving these, um, these are kind of like this is kind of like a last minute thing because the the the, the cream cheese soon starts to soften your, your shortbread, so it's perfect now. But if you have both ready, you, you, your piping bag of uh, cream cheese and herbs, and your top and your bottom, you could by all means, as Marnie tried them, she just tried them as as the actual shortbread. But here they are sort of sandwiched together. Um, it's just just another alternative. It's just That's another scheme. And also, Sandy, yeah. you know, if you are doing something and it does have to be last minute, you can you can whip up your cream cheese with your herbs and or whatever it is you want to put in it. And and you could put that piping bag in the fridge until the last yeah. minute, couldn't you? Of course, of course. It it it'll take it up. Doing them, it would only take us long to put to plant them as it would as you put them on a plate or a board and you're serving them on. That's as long as it takes to get them where you want them. Excellent. And, then, and if you're piping them, it looks very pretty too, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It just, yeah. Now, these, as I said, I did these on Bake Off and they got, you know, all Hollywood was blown away and things. However, I was going back to my childhood, which a lot of my recipes were based on what I grew up with and what I knew. And actually, I was thinking about the, you know, the Ritz cheese sandwich that there used to be many, oh, yeah. many years ago. And this is kind of like that fresh take on those. Yeah, you know, like a throwback to the 70s. Yes. Like Abigail's party. Who remembers oh, yeah. that? We could all do Abby. I could be good at Abigail's party with my drink. <laughs> I told you, Lawrence. I told you, Lawrence. <laughs> what a play that was! <laughs> Fantastic, Alison Stedman. Oh, hooray! Yes. There's Steph. Look, hey guys. Oh, how are you doing? Oh, Steph, you're, you're, <laughs> you're here. You're with us. 
Well, you can't Sandy, there that. is an amazing smell. There is an Good. amazing smell in this canal boat. There's people Good. walking past the tow path, uh, tow path saying, wow, people are baking in there. So uh, yeah, they're probably wait for you, Sandy. You've got us baking. <laughs> you should do, shouldn't I? Yes. <laughs> oh, they're really, it, honestly, it smells amazing. Really, really lovely. And the biscuits are looking, let me just show you the biscuits, Sandy. Well, we've got a connection. But the biscuits, yeah. biscuits are looking good. Oh, yeah. And, and it is, it is, it is, you just want them just turn instead. And this just is the soda bread. The bread. Oh, look. Soda bread's on. looking good. Got a nice colour. Yeah. If yeah, don't, forget to, uh, test, don't forget to test it. If it comes out clean, you, you know, it's done. Don't, don't you, um, and your biscuits, will do. You, you just, yeah, will you do. just want them slightly under golden. You know, you don't particularly, shortbread, there's nothing worse than shortbread yeah. when it's kind of golden brown. You want that very pale, pale colour. Yeah. As I'm stuck here piping, I'm just going to show you. You're, you're going to show us how it should look. When you see, <laughs> multi screen view. Oh, my God. fabulous. So, gorgeous. You know, nice. the, the paprika, the salt, the hazelnut. Um, you've just got that lovely kind of. The, the, so, gosh, you know, what, what, where, where have they come from? And the whole point, my whole point of baking is this. Is this theory of baking down barriers that actually nothing is beyond the realms of possibilities, you know? And the only thing that stops you is your imagination on where you can go with the most simplest of ingredients and recipe. Yes. And then, like you say, it's down to your imagination, and then you can improvise and try all sorts of things that you fancy, can't you? Exactly. Exactly. I, I don't know. People might really not like parmesan and they may choose to use a cheddar i, I think you you will alter the fat content a lot yeah um, might not but it's quite it's a dry hard cheese isn't it parmesan as it has cheddar you want to be with not yeah. a lot of oil that, not, that doesn't emit a lot of oil yes yeah. um as i say just use it you know like we were talking about pastry when we when we first started why not put parmesan Cross the two. You've got the mm. parmesan shortbread and pastry. Put mm. parmesan in your pastry. Yeah, I make... often do that with a savoury tart. I put yeah. thyme and parmesan yeah. in my pastry if I do a savoury tart. Yeah. Or, or your soda nice. bread. Nice. Put, put bacon and onion in it and um, serve it with scrambled egg. You know, the, there, it, it evolves. Every recipe should have legs. It should keep walking and moving and mm. you know and, and and it's the fun Sandy. it's not having fun and, and that's a joy isn't it Sandy, it's a joy of tried creating making... some oh. sorry steph go on i was just going to say have you ever tried making soda bread in a pan and pan frying it oh no under it what like a big what? scum really yeah. it's that's uh, yeah, that's a nice thing to do. Like a pan fried oh, that's bread. Something so take you your that's recipe. That's like a woodcraft thing, isn't it, Steph? <coughs> yeah, you can do it, and you can do it on campfires, you can cooking. do it anywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. very good. Well, Ray Mears would do that, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, you, you know they say this? You can take five people to a desert island. Ray Mears is on my list because that man would get me surviving through anything. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> I think it's walking behind you. Yeah, five people. I'd take one of mine would be Mr. Waitrose with one of his shops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure you'd like to take the shop. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. So, Steph, we've got you. I'm um, not going then. I'm not going. Right, is that was done? Steph, that was done then. Steph, you're leading next week's cook along, aren't you? Could you tell us a little bit about what we're doing? I am, yes. Yes. So, next week we are doing um, some little uh, pan fried cheese and spring onion cakes. Uh, we're using Wensleydale cheese, Yorkshire cheese. And then we're going to serve it with a pea and mint hummus. 
So I'm going to show you how to make a really simple, quick pea and mint hummus and then serve it with these tiny, gorgeous little pan fried um, the Wensydale and spring onion cakes. They're very tasty. It's very simple, but it's really, really a nice recipe to have, you know, stashed away that when when you want something that's a little bit different for Saturday night nibbles, I think I think people will like it. <laughs> people can plan in advance, can't they, Steph? They can go, we've got a week, we can see who yeah. can social distance, we can get people around, I'm going to serve yeah. these gorgeous cakes with our yeah. lovely uh, pea and mint hummus. Lovely. It's it's vegetarian, it's, you know, it, everybody will love this. It's It's cheesy, it's got a bit of everything and pea and mint in summertime on a hot day is beautiful and, and, and your recipe is already up there on the gbsocial.co.uk it is yeah so people who Very... go there they can get the pdf down they can get all their ingredients together and yep. on next saturday yep. night at five o'clock they can all join in and they can zoom in as well and be with us couldn't they yes yeah definitely let's Absolutely. hope they do it <laughs> let's hope so yes yeah lovely and we are cooking again on wednesday nick do we know who's leading on wednesday and what we're making we haven't actually got it confirmed yet chrissy oh somebody come forward and, and lead us in a lovely baking or <laughs> cooking um thing for wednesday it's uh we do wednesdays at seven don't we nick seven o'clock yeah so come on everybody think what lovely things we can cook and eat on a wednesday evening you can lead us all in your recipe and uh, create something gorgeous for us all to eat so we will watch this space but keep looking at gbsocial.co.uk and you can see all the recipes we've done and um, Sandy, we're not quite ready to bring our things out of the oven, but hopefully when they do, people will show their photographs. Oh, um, yes, please, if they would. Yes. Uh, it's been, you've been brilliant, and I hope that you will do another one for us because it's been a pleasure and a joy to have you this Thank evening. You. And Thank you so gorgeous. much. Uh, Thank like you. Slicing of the uh, soda bread and, uh, and the lovely yes. thing on it. And um, people can put whatever toppings they like. So thank you so much, Sandy. And thank you about your telling us about your little booklet. Um, thank you. And, and thank you everyone for joining us tonight. And we shall see you on Wednesday with who knows what we're making. And then we shall see you again next Saturday with Steph, who will Yay! be leading us with our scrummy cheesecakes and uh, our pea and mint hummus. So thank you very much. Come and join us again. Thank Come you. and bake with us, cook with us. And you could leave one as well, anybody. I mean, all these wonderful chefs like, you know, the, the, the lovely Steph is going to do next Saturday. We've had so many different chefs. We've had Sandy, who's been on the Bake Off. But they've also had me, and I'm just me. I'm just in my home, and I love cooking and baking. I haven't been on any programmes on TV, but it doesn't matter. And you can also come and lead us. So do, do join us. Thank you, Sandy. You've been Thank brilliant. You. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Guys. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Just an hour and three minutes of my life. I don't know how many people saw it? Still on.